All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Steve Malsberg here. We're joined by Roger Stone on this uh, very big day. At least it was built into being a big day. Um, of course, the testimony of James Comey, the former FBI director. We welcome in Republican political consultant, 30-year political advisor and confidant to Donald Trump. Roger joins me. He's also the author of the book, The Making of the President, 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a revolution. Stone Zone. Go to StoneZone.com. You can check out his radio show and everything else he's doing. Hey, Roger. Steve, great to be with you. All right. So, so much. Uh, you know, it's uh, hours of testimony, um, and and there's there's some revelations here that strike me. First of all, let me ask you about this. He said, "Lordy, I hope there are tapes," referring to the statement made by Donald Trump a while back about their meetings. That Comey better hope there are no tapes of those meetings. Today, he said, Comey did, that he hopes there are tapes. Um, do you think, I mean, you, you know, you're familiar with the inner workings more so than I, so I'll ask you, do you think that tapes exist of conversations, phone conversations, and at the White House conversations between Comey and Trump? Well, first of all, you've got to compliment Mr. Comey for that lordy, nice kind of a country type inflection for a guy who's a city slicker and a total inside the Washington Beltway operator trying to sound like a country boy. Uh, it's entirely possible, of course, uh, that the president uh, or the Secret Service uh, could have recorded all of the president's conversations. Presidents Johnson and, uh, and Kennedy, of course, taped their phone conversations. President Nixon also taped his Oval Office, uh, Oval Office conversations. Ironically, on the recommendation of Lyndon Johnson. So we have to presume that Mr. Johnson probably uh, taped his as well. It, it's entirely possible, but Mr. Comey seems to be relying on memos or notes, which no one has seen. Perhaps those memos or notes were created yesterday, for all we know. Uh, and, and what disappoints me is he still has not confronted the question of why he believed there was obstruction in the Hillary Clinton case, the email case, on the basis of a memo the FBI obtained, which purported to show obstruction between the Attorney General Loretta Lynch and an official in the Clinton campaign. And on that basis, rather than report that as an officer of the court, Mr. Comey furthered the obstruction. In fact, he facilitated the obstruction by announcing no prosecution. So if Mr. Comey wants to talk about memos and obstruction, I think he better explain that. Well, let, let, let me take it. Okay, so you believe that it's very possible, uh, entirely possible, that there, there are tapes. And, of course, then if we find out there are, and I'm sure people will ask whether it's a special prosecutor or the committees, I guess we'll get to hear those tapes, correct? Uh, well, presumably. Unless I mean, it's executive have... privilege. We could have a long fight over the tapes, right. but uh, exerting executive privilege to block the release of a tape does not have a great precedent in our <laughs> courts, as you know. Yes, I do know. Uh, ironic, ironic today that we see in the Washington Post an op-ed by Philip Lacavara, uh, formerly a Watergate prosecutor, saying that he prosecuted Nixon in Watergate and he knows obstruction when he sees it. Mr. Lacavara met repeatedly and communicated with Judge Sirica, uh, ex parte, without the other parties uh, in the Watergate matter. In other words, he broke the law in that case. He should have been disbarred. I may yet file a bar complaint against him because it's still ripe. Uh, Mr. Lavara needs Lacavara needs to stand down given his track record. All right, let me ask you this. I, I, I want to take it to you. Brought up. Um, uh, Hillary, so I'll throw this in because this was another big revelation. He said that uh, he was told by Attorney General Loretta Lynch not to call the email investigation uh, of Hillary's emails an investigation, but call it a, uh, a matter. Call it a, a, a matter, don't call it an investigation. So that to me is interference from Loretta Lynch and the Justice Department you know, on behalf of, uh, you know, uh, to the to the FBI on, on behalf of that investigation. Well, so not on perhaps, behalf of it, but involving it. Perhaps Mr. Comey was laying the groundwork for what he thinks he knows, what I think he knows is going to be a further question, which is why uh, he believed 
that this counterfeit email that alleged obstruction by Lynch uh, was something he took into consideration when he gave her a pass. If he believed if, if he believed that that memo was real, then it was it was uh, clear evidence of obstruction. He should have reported it as an officer of the court, and instead, he went along with the cover-up. He went along with the obstruction. In fact, he facilitated it. If Lynch did, in fact, tell him to call it a matter and not an investigation, an attempt by Comey to lay the groundwork for his defense, well, that would be, in fact, uh, another reason why he thought that uh, there was obstruction. But the question is, why did he facilitate that obstruction? Why didn't he object to it? Okay. Uh, and is it too late for that? Or, or do you think Republicans, knowing this now, will next bring, uh, eventually bring Loretta Lynch and, well, and po possibly, you, even, possibly even the special prosecutor? Well, I, I'm disappointed, frankly, that neither Senator Rubio nor Senator um, uh, Cotton raised this question, because I think it's, it goes to the heart of Comey's credibility. If he can't, if he, in fact, obstructed justice in the Hillary Clinton case, which it appears he did, then why would we find him credible in his charges against the president where he has an ax to grind? I think the president summed this up, Steve. The man's a nut job. Uh, there's, a, there's just incredible inconsistencies here. And then, of course, if you look at his past, his involvement in the HSBC case, where they were caught money laundering hundreds of millions of dollars in drug matters, avoided jail, and then put Mr. Comey on his board, or, or Lockheed where um, Lockheed is charged with criminal activity across the board uh, in their defense contracting. No one goes to jail. They pay a fine. They pay Mr. Comey $6 million for the fix. Lordy, that's a lot of money for the average. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let me, let me, you, you know the New York Times story, okay? The New York Times story that I had you on for, the one that started it's the, the, the media frenzy uh, several months yeah. ago, collusion, yes. and buried in there was yes. there's no evidence, but didn't matter. You were in there, yes. everybody's in there. Well, Comey today said that the New York Times story was false. He said when he saw it, he was so taken aback, he went to, he went to senators and told them that the story is false. I, I mean, that, 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 that speaks volumes, does it not? Well, it does. It's yet another affirmation that the uh, Russian collusion with the Trump campaign is a hoax. It, it's a fairy tale. By the way, the New York Times is out with that story essentially recycled again yesterday. There's a nice chart with my picture in there. The top, it says Trump aides with ties to Russia. Steve, yet again, I have no ties to Russia. Uh, communicating with WikiLeaks through a third party, WikiLeaks is not a Russian asset. Uh, even Comey could not establish that in the House Intelligence Committee. When asked if WikiLeaks was a front for the Russians, he said, our assessment is they use some kind of cutout. Assessment? Assessment is a code word, Steve. When the people in the uh, intelligence agency say it is our assessment, that means they don't know anything and they're guessing. Or it's what they would like you to believe. All right. Now, we also found out today that these, these notes that Comey took that nobody has seen, as you correctly indicated, and that one senator at least said he wants to see, and Comey uh, kind of said, well, I'll see if I can make it available. He said, no, no, let's make it available. Um, he turns out that in the middle of the night one night, he decided he called a Columbia University professor. Uh, that professor has been identified as uh, reportedly Daniel Richman. Uh, Columbia Law School professor, he called his friend, a Columbia Law School professor, in the middle of the night, told him about the notes, and said, Tell a re call a reporter. I want this out there. When asked why he didn't just do it himself, he said, I didn't want the media on my lawn, blah, blah, blah. So he's a leaker. He leaked the notes to a college professor, told him to call the press. Yeah, these are the erratic actions of a nutcase, in my opinion. Um, uh, he has a lot to answer for. He politicized the FBI. The president had the authority to fire him. He did not fire him to head off a probe of Trump's Russian contacts, because there were none. And frankly, General Flynn continues to be maligned and accused of breaking the law. And while it is clear that General Flynn may have done some things that were stupid, 
None of them constitute a crime, nor do they constitute collusion with the Russians. He remains a, a patriot, a, an American military hero who was accused of wrongdoing when he's done nothing wrong. So the, the, are you surprised that Comey would, uh, would leak these notes the way he did in the middle of the night to a college professor? Well, I, again, I find it erratic. It's also typical, uh, just like releasing your testimony a day before you testimony, or I should say, releasing your open statement. Right. Playing the inside the beltway gotcha one-upmanship game shows you that this is not some country boy lawyer, despite the fact that he's pulling on his forelock and saying stuff like lordy, like we're impressed with that. This is a slick operator who covered up for the Clintons in the Sandy Berger affair, Cover up for the Clintons in the Mark Rich affair. Cover up for HSBC. Cover up for for Lockheed, um, and has reaped millions. He would like you to believe he's just a simple country lawyer. He's a slick operator. He was becoming J. Edgar Comey, deciding what crimes he would prosecute and what he did, what crimes he wouldn't. Told the president, "You're stuck with me for six more years." Really? Surprise. One more for you, Roger. He said that uh, the administration had uh, has lied uh, about uh, about the FBI. Um, they defamed and told lies about the FBI. And uh, he 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 had a message for the people today. The FBI is strong, honest, and will always be independent. What's your uh, your take on that? It's ironic, Steve, because I talk to a lot of FBI agents as sources. To a man, they're delighted with his being fired. They said that he had politicized the agency. Many of the agents that I speak to want to know why there's been no investigation into the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation is not a charity. It's a slush fund for grifters. It's a, it is a, uh, it is a, uh, a vehicle for the facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes. Uh, and uh, why has there been no investigation, for example, into the Clinton Foundation? That's what the FBI agents that I speak to uh, uh, want to know. Under Mr. Comey, the agency was tremendously politicized. I think that's really what this fight is about. We now know uh, that uh, their, the New York Times story was false. We now know that Donald Trump was told three times by Comey, in fact, that he was not under any kind of investigation whatsoever. What is, I ask you this every time you're on. Uh, when are the, uh, you know, the, the, the Democratic phonies on the committees that keep mentioning your name, when are they going to take you up on your offer to testify and, and face the music and clear yourself in public session? Well, I've asked repeatedly. My lawyers are still in touch for them. I made it very clear that I'm prepared to testify, that I will come to voluntarily. I don't need to be subpoenaed. I'm not asking for immunity. But I simply ask for public testimony. I believe they have maligned me. They have made misstatements about my exchange with Guccifer 2.0, who is not a Russian asset. They have made misstatements about my, my non-contacts with WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is, uh, and, and Julian Assange is a journalist, just like the New York Times or the Washington Post or Newsmax. He's not a Russian asset. Uh, but they've made misstatements about these things in public session. They've maligned my patriotism in public session. I should have the right to respond in a public session, and they fear that. Adam Schiff, uh, the the uh, the uh, incredibly ambitious, irresponsible, reckless demagogue who's the ranking Democrat on the House committee, will not face me man-to-man -man, uh, in a public forum because he knows I will demolish his lies. One He's more. He's lied repeatedly. I'm sorry. Has Mueller contact or anybody associated with the special counsel contacted you or your lawyers? Uh, I have not heard from the special counsel. Okay. At this time. Roger, stonezone.com, where everybody can find out everything about you. You can go to stonecoldtruth.com. Stone Cold Truth. Stone Cold Truth. I'm, I'm out of my mind. Or you can go to stonezone.com, <laughs> which has been revived, either one. Okay. And Steve, if you want to know the inside story on the entire Russian question, it is all in the making of the president 2016 by Roger Stone, how Donald Trump orchestrated a revolution. The entire Russian story and the refutation is in this book. All right. It's Roger Stone, Sands Hat. And sans any kind of T-shirt that uh, has any comment to make on uh, Mr. Comey. But maybe next time. You never know. Thank you, my friend. Great to talk to you.
Great to be here. Thanks, Steve. All right, folks. Until next time, thanks for watching. And please check out NewsmaxTV.com and the website, NewsmaxTV.com.